Hello, this is Chef John from FoodWishes.com with Spring Pea Curry with Black Cod. That's right, I don't do a lot of spa food, mostly because I really love fat and carbs. But this gorgeous seasonal twist on a Thai-style green curry was incredibly delicious despite being very low calorie. So I just wanted to make it clear that that was not intentional. Hey, sometimes it just happens. And yes, in case you're wondering, those are strawberries, which if I have anything to do with it, will replace diced mango as the most popular fruit to garnish fish with. But we'll get into that later. For now, let's go ahead and start this very simple spring pea green curry sauce. So we're gonna start with some diced onion in a saucepan, set over medium heat, to which we'll add a little bit of vegetable oil, plus, as usual, a nice big pinch of salt. And all we're gonna do is cook these onions, stirring occasionally, until they turn translucent. Okay, we don't want these to start browning up or getting any color. We basically just wanna cook them until they kinda of soften up, sweeten up a little bit. So we'll continue to sweat those, as they call it in the business, until they look like this. At which point we can add our green curry paste. And what should be great news to most of you, and horrible news to a couple of you, I'm using a brand of jarred green curry paste that you can find in pretty much every large grocery store in the country. And while this would obviously be better if you did make fresh homemade green curry paste, and we will talk about that on the blog, it was absolutely delicious using this and significantly easier. And green curry paste is nothing more than a ground mixture of green chilies, lemongrass, garlic, kefir lime leaves, as well as something called galangal root, which is very similar to ginger. But like I said, we'll go over that in detail on the blog post. For now, we're just gonna stir that in and cook it in that onion mixture for a minute or two to sort of wake it up. And then once that's happened, what we'll do is we'll add a couple cups of chicken broth or water or vegetable broth if you prefer. And we're also gonna raise our heat to high because we need to bring this up to a boil before we add our sugar snap peas. Okay, so we'll add our liquid, we'll crank up the heat, and as soon as it starts boiling, we will add one pound of sugar snap peas. And if you're not familiar, sugar snap peas are like a pea pod that you can eat everything. Everything's very sweet and tender, similar to a snow pea, which by the way, you can substitute in this recipe. And the same goes for just regular shelled peas. But this time of year, sugar snap peas are generally easy to find and highly recommended for this. And then what I'm gonna do here is pop on the lid and cook these for just about two minutes until they just start to get tender. We do not want anything soft and mushy here. Okay, we want these to retain that beautiful green color. We're mostly just taking away the rawness. So like I said, we're only gonna cook them for a few minutes until that happens. And there really is only one acceptable way to test this. You're gonna to have to fish one out and test it with your teeth. So I checked one and it was perfect. And once we determine ours are just right, we'll turn off the heat and blend this until completely smooth. So I went ahead and grabbed my trusty immersion blender and I started a puree and it ended up doing a tremendous job of not working. So this first attempt was a complete failure. So I stopped and carefully transfer that into a blender like I should have in the first place. And you will notice I'm doing that right in front of the immersion blender, so it really knows how much it disappointed me. But anyway, we'll go ahead and we'll use the blender on this instead. And you always wanna be extremely careful when you're blending hot liquids. Never fill the blender more than halfway. All right, so do it in batches if you have to. And it's also a great idea to put a towel over the top just in case. So anyway, I continued blending on high speed until it was completely liquefied, at which point we're gonna strain this back into our pot. And a lot of times I tell you this step is optional. This time, I don't think it is. Okay, as sweet and tender as those sugar snap peas are, like any kind of pea pod, there's gonna be a good amount of fibrous material. And if you're thinking, aren't we throwing away the part of the vegetable that's supposed to be the best for us? Well, yes, yes we are. And by straining that out, you're gonna get a much silkier, much more luxurious texture. So we'll go ahead and we'll strain our sauce and we'll place that back on the stove on low heat and finish with the seasoning. And the first step to that process is grabbing a spoon and giving this a taste. And since this was the first time I've ever made this, I was assuming it was gonna need some major adjustments and it did. So I added a whole nother spoon of the green curry paste and one drawback of the stuff in the jar is it's generally not that spicy. So keep that in mind, you might wanna sneak in an extra serrano chili or two. I also decided to add a splash of fish sauce for a little subtle funkiness and a little bit of saltiness. And then I also added some regular salt also for a little extra saltiness. And I stirred that in and decided my seasonings were just about perfect except it needed some acidity. So I squeezed in some fresh lime juice from a fresh lime, and I stirred that in, and then gave it one more taste, at which point I decided it was perfect for me. You're gonna have to check this and adapt it to your taste. You are the Stefan of your curry. So the final seasonings are gonna be up to you, but once it is tasting how we want it, we will just hold that on low heat while we sear our black cod, which is only gonna take a couple minutes, because I'm gonna use some nice small two ounce pieces, 
So I have some boneless filet with the skin still on them. It's been scaled, of course. And then a great tip, have your fishmonger make some shallow cuts through the skin. It's fine to go right into the flesh a little bit. And of course, you could do that yourself with a sharp knife. And not only does that allow for a more penetrative seasoning, but it's also going to help it cook quicker and keep that skin from curling the filet up so it'll stay nice and flat, which is going to help that skin crisp up beautifully. So we'll season our fish very simply with some salt. And then all we're going to do is sear this on medium-high heat with a little bit of vegetable oil in a nonstick pan. And since we are going to serve this sitting in that hot green curry sauce, we don't want to overcook this here. So I'm just going to give it a couple minutes on the skin side, and then we'll flip it over and give the other side a couple minutes until it's just barely cooked through. And you can see how gorgeous that skin looks. And by the way, if you don't use black cod, so many things would work here. Salmon would be great. Shrimp would be great. Mussels, scallops, things like that. But anyway, we're going to cook our black cod. And once that's done, we're ready to plate up. So first up, we'll go ahead and ladle some of our green curry sauce into a hot bowl. And then we will transfer in our perfectly cooked black cod. Oh man, that looks good. But wait, there's more. And I hope you're sitting down for this. But I'm going to garnish this with a little bit of diced strawberry, which I realize may sound insane. That is until you actually think about it for a second. All right, the acidity of a strawberry is very close to a lemon. And no one has a problem putting that on fish. And in addition, that subtle sweetness from the fruit really, really works well with that green curry sauce. And then last but not least, I'm going to finish off with a little bit of thinly sliced mint. Okay, mint and fresh peas are an age-old combination that works so well together. And that spring pea curry with black cod is done. And I realize you may be skeptical, but all I can tell you is this. That was one of the most delicious things I've eaten in a long time. And if you can, try to find black cod. It is so perfect in this. It has a very sweet, mild, buttery flavor. In fact, one of the names for black cod is butterfish. And we got that little bit of textural thing going on between the crispy skin and that moist, flaky meat. And again, as bizarre as it may seem to you, the strawberries, besides looking beautiful, really pulls this dish together. They just work so well, and yet I'm sad because I know some people won't try this just because they can't wrap their head around it. Man, I was in such a good mood, too. So anyway, I'd really hate to think that will stop you from trying this dish, but I've done all I can do to hopefully convince you that this totally works. So anyway, like I said, I'm no spa chef, although once in a while I accidentally play one on the internet. So if you're looking for a beautiful, an incredibly delicious, light and healthy dish to enjoy after your yoga class, but before your Pleiades class, I really hope you give this a try. So head over to foodwishes.com for all the ingredient amounts and more info as usual. And as always, enjoy.